ready? Begin to worship. We'll be blessed because we came. Oh, we'll be blessed because we came. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name, knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. Oh, we'll be blessed because we came. steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faith. Fullness, O Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. We'll be blessed because we came. And you've got heaven bound there, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a place I will go, for the Bible tells me so, to live in peace with my Lord forevermore. Through those gates I will fly, like a bird up in the sky, it's my reward. And I'm heaven bound. Should he call me home tonight, I'll be ready for that flight. Let the angels be the wind to lift my wings. Through those clouds I will rise to my home up beyond the skies it's my reward and i'm heaven bound i'll hear the voice of the trumpet as it calls me through that door i will walk with him alone it's been a long road to here, and faith has brought me through the fear. It's my reward, and I'm heaven bound.
blast of the trumpet as it calls me. And through that door I will walk with Him alone. It's been a long road to here, and faith has brought me through the fear. It's my reward, and I'm heaven bound. It's my reward, and I'm heaven bound. Ready? Water. Water. Slow. They say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Sounds like the road that I've been walking way too long. God knows the things I've done that I can't even mention. And I know all too well the things that I've done wrong. I've always heard salvation's just one prayer away. If I give you my soul, give you control, and let you lead the way. They say you're there to help us up if we should stumble. To give us rest when we are weary of this life. And when the world around us seems like it could crumble. To give us hope that everything will turn out right. If not today, then when do I turn my back on sin? Do I walk the way you left for me? Let my life in you begin. If not for you, then why do we live this life to die? There's just one answer in the end, and I've got to ask myself, if not today, then when? to believe when you could take my hand and take command and set my spirit free if not today then when do I turn my back on sin do I walk the way you left for me let my life in you begin if not for you, then why do we live this life to die? There's just one answer in the end, and I've got to ask myself, if not today, then when?
you sure? Yes, I Maybe we should go slow. Do you want to do it again right now? Do which one? Let's do all the people then as we go. Okay. Okay. You are not alone If you are lonely When you feel afraid You're not the only We are all the same In need of mercy To be forgiven and be free It's all you got to lean on But thank God it's all you need And all the people said amen Whoa, and all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord for His love never ends And all the people said Amen If you're rich or poor, well it don't matter Weak or strong, we know love is what we're after We're all broken but we're all in this together God knows we stumble and we fall and he so loved the world, he sent his son to save us all. And all the people said, Amen. Oh, and all the people said, Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart Blessed are the persecuted and the pure in heart Blessed are the people longing for another start For this is the kingdom, the kingdom of God And all the people said amen Oh, and all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord his love never ends And all the people said Amen And all the people said Amen Oh, and all the people said Amen Give thanks to the Lord For His love never ends And all the people said Amen And all the people said Amen Good morning. If you're not awake now or before you are now, thank you. Thank you. It's a blessing to be here. Let's do it. Yeah. And then if there's time, we'll do the last one. Okay. Yeah. Because we can Oh, we'll be blessed because we can As we gather, may your spirit work within us As we gather, may we glorify your name Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we came. Oh, we'll be blessed because we came. The steadfast love of the Lord. Never come to an end They are new every morning New every morning Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord Great is thy faithfulness 
blessed because we came. Oh, we'll be blessed because we came. Howdy. Howdy. Is this thing? Ah, maybe that's better. I don't know. Anyway, welcome to worship. It's good to see everybody. And uh, especially on this day in which we celebrate Christ the King. And what that does today is ushers us into our Advent season. And it's already here. And this coming Wednesday is the very first of our Advent services. We also have the soup supper ahead of time. So keep that in mind. Uh, tell your friends, neighbors, uh, enemies, and friends. I said friends twice, but you know what I mean. Uh, and uh, take some time during this Advent season to focus, to center upon who our Lord Jesus is. Uh, as Christ the King, He is our King. And then we make that transition from uh, being King as an adult and getting ready to suffer and die, but now we go backwards a little bit and we go to the preparation time when the scriptures, the prophet's uh, prophetic word is being fulfilled, and that is that there is a harbinger, there is a forerunner, and the uh, Elijah was the original that said that he would usher in the messianic era. Well, uh, that prophecy became fulfilled in Jesus. Uh, in Jesus following John the Baptist because John the Baptist then is a type of Elijah and Jesus even said that uh, Elijah in fact does come and if you'll receive it John the Baptist is he and so by doing that one of those times is when he made the a declaration albeit kind of uh, uh, under the line you might say that he is Messiah and from that point on then he was teaching his disciples who he is. He is Messiah. And eventually, well, they kind of got it. Uh, it's kind of like us. Sometimes we kind of get it. And then other times we really get it. Uh, so, but that's the way it is with us because we are Satan centered at the same time. There are times when we are weak in our faith, but then we turn to Jesus and he strengthens us and shows us that he is present with us always and he is still our king and he is God above all gods. In fact, next to him, as we know, there are no gods. And so we celebrate Christ the King because it's pointing toward the celebration of Christmas when the event took place where Jesus our King is born. And we can remember that hopefully through the time of Advent as we get prepared. Because Advent meaning coming and we prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus the second time when he says he will gather his people uh, from the four corners of the earth and will take them to be with himself in heaven. So that's a pretty cool deal. And so that's what we look forward to, remembering the past and the present we're preparing and the future once uh, Jesus comes. Those who are prepared and waiting will, uh, will have that eternal life that Jesus has promised. So as we think about that, we go into our time of prayer. And uh, we have several folks that I've listed and some, a couple others, others that I received. And uh, so just to go through them so we don't get uh, reiteration, uh, for Pat, Pat Grubley, who is still in the hospital, and uh, his kidney function has begun to improve. Uh, there are some improvements. He's receiving chemotherapy right now. Uh, they diagnosed it as a... Uh, a blood cancer of some sort. Aggressive B-cell lymphoma. Uh, an aggressive B-cell lymphoma. Okay. And which is foreign to me because I don't know about this stuff, but it's serious. But the, the, uh, the good news is that it's very treatable uh, when it's caught early. And we know this because some folks that uh, we've come to understand uh, were diagnosed when they were in stage four and they survived for another 11 years after taking the treatments. So this is, this is good news that finally they diagnosed it and now they can get on a regimen to help him fight this. So keep him in your prayers. And, and Debbie, you know, she's dealing with that stubborn German and uh, 
<laughs> and I'm speaking because I am German, so nanner nanner. Uh, I can tell on myself, but don't talk to Cheryl because all you hear are fibs. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, turn a deaf ear because she'll she'll talk your ear off about me. <laughs> Have a lineup. Thanks a lot, Penny. <laughs> okay. Uh, also for Joanne Herman, uh, the word I think has gotten around that uh, uh, Walter passed away this last week, and uh, on Friday. I think it was Friday, wasn't it? Saturday. It was yesterday, yeah. Everything's getting all muddled up for me. And um, so we need to remember Joanne and Daryl and the other members of the family. I can't remember their names, so uh, you can fill in the blanks. And uh, no other news other than uh, that uh, Walter has passed away. Uh, we still are lifting Christine in our prayer. She's still fighting the good fight. Uh, for Todd Peterson, still recovering from his broken ankle. And then we have some prayers also. And the one that I can't remember the name of the island. That's, that's where I grew up is Wrangell. Wrangell, okay. Uh, residents of Wrangell Island uh, who lost family and friends in a horrific mudslide last week. Uh, Kim and Barb Heller and their uh, three children were swept into the ocean in their home. Adi, uh, I think it's floor shooter, shooter mm -hmm. uh, was uh, swept away with his beloved horses, dogs, goats, and cats. Uh, but his wife, Christine, was pulled from the ocean. She's recovering at the, at the hospital. A third family survived because they ran from their home before it was swept away. And then also for Sarah, no, Seth uh, Buswell, right? Yes who suffered a very serious injury in a motorcycle accident, uh, injury to his right leg, and he's recovering at OHSU. Are there others? Just a reminder, <clears throat> we got some really bad juju taking place in Eastern Europe and Middle East. Uh, just a quick prayer for me on Wednesday morning at 8. I go to the orthopedic doctor and hopefully we'll figure out what's going on. So Wednesday at 8, I'd really appreciate some prayers. Thank you. Others? Let's go to our Lord. Oh, gracious God and Heavenly Father, we come to you um, with a note of sadness and also a note of uh, thanksgiving. Because first of all, we thank you that your presence is always with us, and that in itself gives us great confidence in coming to you in prayer. Just as your son Jesus had said that uh, we can come to you like a child comes to its good earthly father, but we know that you are the one who can give all good things. And so we trust you uh, to hear our prayers and that you are already way ahead of us in uh, the design that, ha that you have for each and every person that we bring before you. And so we bring uh, to you Pat Grubley and Joanne Herman and uh, Daryl and, and other family members, uh, for Christine and her family, for Todd Peterson and for Michelle, uh, for Karen, uh, Patsy Clausen's daughter, uh, who's sick and still grieving her daughter's death and uh, having a friend who died of an overdose a couple days ago. Uh, for uh, Seth, for the, uh, all the residents of Wangle Island, uh, those who have lost family and friends, uh, these are tragic times for them, Lord. We ask that you'll hold them up that you will bring uh, people to come alongside of them and help them through this uh, very tragic time, uh, providing the necessities and also to help them in the rebuilding process. Also to help them in their grief 
that they will lean on you and lean on you very hard and that you indeed are sending the resources necessary that will help them through these horrible times. And we uh, lift you, uh, Kim and, and Barb, and uh, for the three children, uh, we know that you have taken care of them, and we know that uh, what you do is right and good, and it's all according to your will. And also for Adi Florschute, that uh, family, his friends, um, who are grieving now will will come to you and lift up their requests, and also for uh, for Christina, the one survivor. Uh, Lord, she's going to have a lot of things to go through, as you well know, and so help us to lift her up. And once again, that you are going to send the people and the resources to her that will help her through her grief, and for the family. Uh, that survived, sometimes uh, they have a, uh, a feeling of remorse because they are the ones who survived. But help them to move through that time and to turn their energies that you give them in reaching out to the neighbors that they still have. And so, Lord, uh, for, uh, for Seth, we ask that you will bring healing and wholeness to his right leg and that uh, he'll be able to recover well and get back on his feet, totally, totally restored. And for Meredith, that as she goes to the orthopedic doctor for analysis and a regimen for helping her with her, her leg, uh, bless her and bless the doctor with the wisdom and the knowledge that can uh, pinpoint the difficulty and what needs to be done. And also, for, the, uh, for Eastern Europe, the Middle East, uh, the ongoing war, and uh, Lord, you alone are the one that knows how this is all going to shake out. Uh, Lord, with uh, our nation so divided uh, between the supporters of the Palestinians and supporters of the Jewish nation, Lord, uh, we need your help to get this all sorted out and that there is uh, no mean-spiritedness, no hate, that people can uh, work together. But we know that... Uh, there are those that want to wipe out the whole Jewish nation. And so, uh, Lord, help them that they will be strong and they can withstand uh, the enemy's onslaught of, uh, of, uh, of tragedy, uh, of, of war, of disaster, of death. So, Heavenly Father, uh, so many things we bring before you with a, once again, a note of of sorrow and grief and petition, but we, we thank you once again that you hear us. We thank you once again that you are still King of kings and Lord of lords, and that the enemy, Satan, will not be able to succeed in all his desires, that you have put limits on him, and we need to realize that he has limits. Uh, he can only do so much. He can scare us to death, he can cause all kinds of calamities, but he cannot keep us from your arms. So Heavenly Father, bless us so that our faith will, mean, will remain strong and that we will follow you. We will follow you as your servants and people who will walk in your son Jesus' footsteps. Grant this to us for uh, Jesus' sake, and we say amen. amen. <laughs> Please stand for our worship. <coughs> this is the day the Lord has made. Let, let us, us rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad, glad in it. Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. We love, we love because, because God, God first loved, loved us. us. If someone says, I love God, yet hates a brother or sister, that person is a liar. For one, one cannot love, love God who is not, not seen, seen, if one does not, not love a brother or sister who is seen. seen. This then is the command Christ gave us. Anyone who loves God must also love a brother and sister. O oh, oh, divine, divine Master, master. 
grant that we may not so much seek to be, seek to be consoled as to console, to, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. Amen. Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things to your beloved Son, whom you anointed priests forever and King of all creation, grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united under the glorious and gentle rule of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together at confession. Eternal God, hear us as we confess our sins before you and each other. Our tongues speak of love, but our hearts hold anger. 
Our voices cry out for compassion, but our actions testify only to apathy. You have given us a path to follow, but our feet lead us into darkness. Forgive us these sins and the sins we dare not speak in the name of Jesus. In him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Hear the good news. This is how God showed, showed love for us. Jesus came into the world so that we might have life. This is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that God loves us and sent Jesus to us so that our sins are forgiven. Amen. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world by the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the scriptures. Christ the King Sunday. Our psalm today is taken from Psalm 95, and I would like us to read it together. It's a secret. <laughs> okay. Or I'll just read it. It's okay. Oh, come. Sing to the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For we are God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hands. Today, if you hear his voice. <laughs> okay. Don't neglect it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Our first reading is taken from the prophet of Ezekiel, chapter 34, and the reading is split between verses 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. You can find this on page 858 in your pew Bibles, yes. You know, oftentimes when we're compared to sheep, we're told that sheep are kind of <laughs> stupid. They don't like to follow directions. They go off on their own thing. If one leads this way, they all go that way when they should be going this way. But in this part of the scripture, I'm thankful that I'm a sheep. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so I will seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down on, in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, 
and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, behold I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns until you have scattered them abroad. I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be a prince among them. I am the Lord, and I have spoken. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 15, starting at verse 20, and that can be found on 1142 in your Bibles. I am going to start just a little bit earlier because I think it brings it into context. So I am going to be starting at verse 12. He's talking here of the resurrection of the dead. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who have also fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. And picking up at verse 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. You'll find the gospel in your pew Bibles on page 988. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, 
and all the angels with him. Then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Dear friends and family in Christ, may God's grace, his mercy, and his peace be to you from the one who is, who was, and whoever shall be, world without end, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is, in fact, Christ. Amen. A story is told by Paul Lee Tan about uh, a young mo boy that he met one, one Sunday at his uh, pastorate in a church in Boston. He met this young boy in front of the sanctuary and he was carrying a rusty cage in which several birds were fluttering nervously. And uh, Gordon re inquired, son, where did you get those birds? The boy replied, I trapped them out in the field. Well, what are you going to do with them? I'm going to play with them, and I guess I'll just feed them to an old cat when I have at home. When Gordon offered to buy them, he exclaimed, Mister, you don't want them. They're just old wild birds and can't sing very well. 
And Gordon replied, I'll give you two dollars for the cage and the birds. Okay, it's a deal, but you're making a bad bargain. So the exchange was made, and the boy went away whistling, happy with his shiny coins. Gordon walked around to the back of the church property, opened the door of the small wire coop, and let the struggling creature soar into the blue. The next Sunday he took the empty cage into the pulpit and he used it to illustrate his sermon about Christ's coming to seek and to save the lost, paying for them with his own precious blood. That boy told me the birds were not songsters, said Gordon, but when I released them, they winged their way heavenward and it seemed to me they were singing, redeemed, redeemed, redeemed. You and I have been held captive to sin, but Christ has purchased our pardon and set us at liberty. When a person has a life-changing experience, he or she will want to sing, Redeemed! 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 In today's Gospel, Jesus is talking about a shepherd who is separating sheep from goats. Now, as we heard earlier, that it was sheep from sheep. When we get to this time in which uh, Jesus is explaining the last day, he's using the analogy of sheep and goats. And of course, you know, the goat is always the one that uh, gets sent off with, with sin and they're destroyed. And the sheep are the ones who continue in the shepherd's care. Now Jesus did that to help illustrate to the people who are listening that you don't want to be a goat. Right? Yeah, good. You're with me. <laughs> we just want to be a sheep. Ba, 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 ba. We just want... Oh. <laughs> we want to be sheep. But are we? Are we? Do we do those things that sheep do? Now I know they've been known to be stupid, but they're also very smart because they know the voice of the shepherd. Now I've been around cattle and sometimes they hear the voice and they're going, huh? <laughs> you have to almost be like those trombone players who start playing and, and the, the cows start heading toward them because they're curious, what is, that, what is that sound? It almost sounds like a cow, but let's go check it out. But the sheep know the master's voice. And the shepherd does not have to push the sheep. The shepherd leads the sheep. And we are not sheep when we are not listening to the shepherd's voice. When we are not following the shepherd. It is that time when we change wool and we become a goat. Actually, it's hair, isn't it, a goat? Yeah. So we become hair suitors rather than wool providers. We become like a goat that is sent out into the wilderness to die. Because upon them sin has been laid and there is no escape. Jesus wants us to know that we can all be sheep as we follow him. But if we don't, we are goats. And at the last day, there's going to be a separation that is irreversible. The goats will go into eternal punishment, the sheep into that kingdom that has been inherited, that they've inherited uh, through Jesus. Now imagine this for a moment. It's a world where a goat, when presented with the opportunity to be transformed miraculously into a sheep, could do so just by embracing an offer extended by the one making the offer. Supernaturally, the goat would be instantaneously into a baby sheep and cared for by the great transformer, Christ the Savior and King. Think about that for a moment. What do you suppose a, a goat might do? Well, each one of us is born as a goat because we are full of sin. And as we see later in this scripture, 
The Lord, the Judge, Christ the King will allow each of us to enjoy or endure the path we have freely chosen. Heaven and hell begin here, you know. And we don't have to uh, have God pass judgment. God will let us have our way as we have judged ourselves. If we have not served our brothers or sisters in Christ, or even those who don't know, and inviting them into that relationship by presenting the gospel to them, we are the goats. We are, we are basically worthless. And God will say, have it your way, you want to be worthless, then go to where the worthless are, among Satan, who is totally worthless. Be with him, if that's what you really want. But the fact of the matter is, in this story, we see that Jesus is judging what the, what the sheep have all uh, the sheep and the goats have already decided. Those sheep that were once goats, the people, they came to know Jesus. They embraced him. They trusted in him. They follow him. They do as Jesus does. And the goats remain goats because they are not heeding and responding to the calling of God. Jesus says, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Jesus goes out and he calls to his sheep, the ones who are running amok, the ones who eat themselves lost, the one who, who don't pay attention to anything other than having their head down and doing things their way rather than the shepherd's way. We all have that response offered to us as Jesus presents himself to us as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the one who would be also our high priest in the very sacrifice that would be sacrificed. He's done it all because he loves us and he doesn't want us to remain goats. He wants us to become his sheep, the sheep of his pasture, the sheep of his hand, and not to go wandering off eventually into oblivion. So it's on us, isn't it? God's grace is amazing, reaching out to us with his word of truth, his word of hope, his word that promises transformation and restoration, his word that will save us, because Jesus died on the cross for us, that Jesus, his son, became, became the king of kings and lord of lords as he rose from the dead, right out of that tomb. And it's there that God was declaring, now I am beginning to put all things, all enemies, under his footstool. And that's a very significant thing. Because the footstool was that of a king that he would rest his, his feet on it while he was sitting on the throne. And in some cultures, on that footstool, they would carve the names of those nations they had subdued, they had conquered. So when the king put his, his feet on that cushion, it was saying, these people I have conquered. They belong to me. I have subdued them. Now, when Jesus is putting his feet on the footstool, he has conquered all things, sin, death, and the power of Satan. And one day, that last, that last enemy, not only Satan, but death, will be written on that footstool, and all things will be made new. Think about that. To be sheep under the care of of the shepherd, the great shepherd, and the king of kings. Last week we were looking at the talents. And one of the things that we learned from that was that we are all given gifts. And that Jesus expects us to use those gifts to his glory. To increase them. By, as today's lesson, serving others, visiting the sick, visiting those in prison, helping to supply the needs of people who have come through disasters, just as we heard in our prayers today. 
And those kinds of disasters are all around us. Some are more heinous, heinous than others. But they're all around us, and how do we reach out and meet them? How do we increase those talents, those gifts that we have by reaching out into our community, not just among ourselves, but beyond these walls, the homeless, the downtrodden, those folks that no one else wants to deal with. Jesus dealt with, dealt with stinky people. He dealt with the riffraff of society. That's why the, the uppity-ups in, in the religious uh, circle had a real uh, bone to chew with, with Jesus. When we think about these two together, maybe this little story will help us. There's a story about a huge bank where one of the employees was up for a significant promotion. But he lost that promotion one day in the bank's cafeteria when the president of the bank saw the man hide two pats of butter under his bread so he wouldn't have to pay for them. The president of the bank concluded that any man who was dishonest about butter could not be trusted with bigger things. And isn't that how it goes? Today, on the internet, through Facebook, all those other ones that I can't name for the life of me, employers are looking through all the people that have to do with his business. And when you put in a resume, he will go to your, your uh, Facebook site or whatever it is and check it out. What kinds of things are you saying? If you are bad-mouthing people, Red flag number one. If you talk about congratulating someone who has done something illegal, red flag number two. When you talk in filth, red flag number three. You don't get the job. In fact, sometimes it only takes one red flag and you're done. That word will get around. You can't be trusted in a simple thing as being on the internet. What makes you think that you can be trusted when you're among God's people? So often we hide behind the anonymity of the internet. We say things that we would never say to anybody else in person. And Jesus is saying, don't you dare do those things in any way, shape, or form. The Eighth Commandment is totally annihilated by this kind of behavior on the internet. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And as Martin Luther says, you shall not uh, curse, swear, uh, be conceived con by deceit uh, or lie uh, on, on people. No, no, no. That's breaking that commandment. And that commandment fits everybody. It's a one size fits all. Nobody gets out of it. And so you can see that a person's real personality will come out by what they post in the internet. I've followed some of them from uh, folks in the past that I've uh, been pastor to, and it has just amazed me what kind of filth comes out of them. Had one young woman... Uh, I was particularly fond of her, uh, a friend, uh, a daughter of a very good friend, and she was telling the story of how she got out of a ticket by exposing herself. And I made a comment, I said her name, how little of you. You are small. You know better than that. You are a Christian. You are a follower of Jesus. How dare you do that? I never got a response. I didn't expect one. But you see, what are we doing with those gifts? Because Jesus holds us accountable. He says, you didn't do these things. I gave you all these gifts, these talents and everything. You didn't do anything with them. And now, when it comes to the time of judgment, you're going to want to change skins? There's no way. You have made, as the, my mom used to say, you've made your bed, you're going to sleep in it. 
And isn't that the truth? And especially how tragic it is when that time comes and we are one of those that say, Lord, Lord. And Jesus says, I tell you the truth. I don't know who you are. See, the little things are very important. Benjamin Franklin, who wrote, For want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost, being overtaken and slain by the enemy, all for the want of care about a horseshoe nail. The little things mean a lot. And it's like in stewardship. You can do a lot with a lot. You can do a lot with a little. You can do a little with a lot and a little with a little. It's up to you. God has given each and every one of us at least one thing that we can serve him with and increase and, and help other people. You see, the thing that we wrestle with is the bondage we have to Satan and sin. There are so many times when we don't believe that Jesus has saved us. You realize that? When we doubt him. When we say, oh, that was, I did the most horrible thing. How can Jesus forgive me? That's a lack of faith. We know Jesus will forgive us. We come to him as he has said, and he will forgive our sins and cleanse us. We just heard that this morning. Cleanse us from all our uh, unrighteousness. He makes us clean. We have the opportunity of being goats and becoming sheep. But how many times do we say, what is despair and total unbelief is what the actual unforgivable sin is when we say to God, even you can't help me. So knowing that we are in bondage to sin and Satan, let's remember that we have a king that has conquered Satan and sin. He has put it away. When our sins are forgiven, they are chased. They are annihilated. You can't get them back if you wanted to. But why would we? But we see folks who will feel like they're forgiven and go right back to doing what they did. That's unbelief. Paul tells us that we are not to keep on sinning. In fact, when Jesus met the, uh, the woman who was caught in adultery, what he said at the last, he says, go and sin no more. You know what that means? Do not go and sin intentionally. And what do we have in our confession? Things that we have done and things that we have left undone. And those things are, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. And there's the biggie. We just had this morning that, you know, we say that we love God, but we hate a brother or sister. We're liars. Total liars. Absolute liars. And so if we're saying, well, I can't stand that person's guts, guess what? You've just become a liar to God. Because he says, Regardless, we must love. Doesn't mean we have to like it. But it means that in love, in God's love, we need to forgive. Now there are times, of course, when what, uh, what Jesus was asked, how many times must I forgive my brother when he sins against me? He says seven times. Well, you know, that, that means after that I can whack him. But Jesus says, no, you keep forgiving. And there are times when not forgiving is the most, uh, is the most, uh, well, I can't think of the word that I want, but when it's the best thing to do, because it makes the person have responsibility. You keep them accountable. You keep preaching at them. <laughs> Just like you do the devil when he's getting at you. That's what, that's what Luther says. If the, the devil is bugging you, if he's trying to get you to slip up, you just start preaching at him. Just tell him about Jesus. 
Well, anyway, I think I've milked this cow long enough. <laughs> but keep in mind that when we are born, we are a goat because we're born in sin. In sin did my mother conceive me. I was born in sin. But the sin doesn't have to remain because we have a king that is king of all. He is king of disease. He is king uh, and, and, the, uh, and a physician that will bring us healing and wholeness. He is a Lord that doesn't lord it over us, but gathers us in and leads us. His kingdom is not one of, of wrath, although there are times when God gets pretty upset. And at the end, that wrath is going to be something that we have placed upon ourselves. So the message for us today is, be the sheep that God in Christ wants you to be. Because if you're not, you're a goat. And we know what the results of that is going to be. Follow your Savior. Follow Jesus in his footsteps. Follow him as far as he leads you, all the way to heaven. Don't stop and look over your shoulder. Follow him. You don't have to relive all the problems and the situations you've been through. You'll focus on him. If you have sinned against him, if you've done something horrible to somebody, confess your sin and know that Jesus will forgive you and does. Remember that as you follow your king, he is one who is not going to look for ways to punish you. He is going to look for ways to lift you up. So that as you approach him, it's not with your head down, it is with your chin up. Because that is the way he wants that relationship to be. Not as a slave to sin, but as a servant of love. A servant of the Most High God, his son Jesus Christ. This is what he will do for each and every one of us as we await his coming. And that is why we have this season of Advent to help us to prepare. It helps us to understand our need for preparation, our need to do that which sheep are required to do and led to do. And I'll just put in a little advertisement for that. It's called the clothing of the king. And we're going to see how clothing fits into the time of preparation. Now you're probably wondering, how does that work? Well, you have to come and see. <laughs> Amen. Please stand as you're able for our hymn of the day. And just as a... Uh, a reminder that the uh, hallelujahs at the end are after the fourth verse. Okay? So don't go into any autopilot like I have. <laughs>
king. No more dying there. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. We confess our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment, share the peace with one another. Peace of the Lord, y'all. <laughs> and peace to you. Yeah, I'm going to 
seated. <coughs> Our Lord Jesus Christ in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, remember us always in your kingdom and keep teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear people of God, all things are prepared, and the Lord invites you to his supper table. Keep in mind that worthiness to receive the body and blood of Jesus is simply a believing heart, for it is God who knows our hearts. And also that there are gluten-free wafers and uh, grape juice in place of wine. If you want either one of those just as you're approaching me, put up your index finger. I'll know exactly what to do. So if things are prepared, come to the Lord's Supper.
to a shelter from the storm a faithful friend and I can depend on you my God my King I lift my voice and worship Jesus you are my stripes I am healed I am healed oh Jesus you are my Savior oh Jesus you are my strength and my shield I put my trust in your name in your Please stand as you're able. Now the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who's just given you himself in this meal of bread and wine, may he strengthen and preserve each one of you in true faith and in your serving till life eternal. Amen. <clears throat> and now the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loves us and through grace gives us eternal comfort and hope comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and deed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen, Amen. Amen. they're going to be, but there'll be announcements. <clears throat> Hi, guys. <laughs> this Hi. isn't... This Hi. Is, Hi. Hi. <laughs> this isn't as much of an announcement as something I had to share. Some of you know I was the bell ringer at Walmart uh, 
yesterday. And She's still dingy. <laughs> yeah, I'm st and I'm still dingy, yes. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, precious little thing happened yesterday. You know, people, some people put in coins and some just nod their head to you, you know. <laughs> but what is what it is. But this one lady came by with her child and she gave him a couple, you know, change to put in the kettle. And they started to walk away. And he's like, no, no. And she says, what? And he says, I want to give this. And she says, no, honey, no, no. And he says, please, please let me give this. And he couldn't get it into the kettle. Well, that's because this is what it was. His little car. And he wanted to give that to Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Cool. A child shall lead us. Amen? Yep. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Meredith. You're welcome. Uh, two quick announcements. Number one, as I do have tickets, if anyone is interested in buying tickets for the Lebanon Community Chorus Concert on the 9th, uh, please see me in fellowship. I'll be here briefly, but we have grandkids coming this afternoon, so I can't stay too long. And second of all, on Saturday at the tree lighting, the Habitat for Humanity is going to have a booth. We'll be selling cookies and cider. And all proceeds go towards our home builds. We're completing one in Sodaville and about ready to break ground on a second one. So uh, please come see me at the tree lighting and get some cookies and cider. Made by AG, AJ and her crew. Um, I'm up here again, and one of the things is that we're going to have caroling and cookies next Sunday following fellowship. So for all those that like to hum along, or sliders that go up and down like me, um, come and join us, okay? We'll have coffee and cookies and a lot of fun. Um, and then the other thing is... Yeah, inside. It's inside. It is inside. It's not the corner one. We're doing the one we did a couple years ago. Inside, stay warm, <laughs> enjoy the cookies and the coffee. And then the other thing is, is we, those, um, we still have some baskets and some of the tiles that the ladies made, and gentlemen, we did have a couple men make them too, are still back there on the table for anyone who would like to look at them. They're going down today, so if you want to look at them and purchase, they're back there for you. Thank you, Billy. Just to remind you that next Friday, this coming Friday, Saturday and Sunday, are the Singing Christmas Tree concerts. There's um, posters out there and some smaller um, reminders on the tables. So if you are able to join us, please do. You've got two weekends of wonderful music coming your way. So please join us. And also just a reminder to all of the women in the congregation, um, I wasn't going to say anything about it, but um, take note of the Christmas gathering that will be happening here on Tuesday, December 5th at 10 a.m. So read about that. Okay, thanks. All right, and uh, just to point out that once again, this coming Wednesday, we begin our Advent uh, series midweek. So Wednesday, you can come here and uh, glom on some good uh, soup and bread and then gather in here at uh, 630 for worship and incidentally the uh, the soup supper begins at 530 goes to 615 and then worship at 630 once again it's clothing of the king and then also let me see here uh, what I was remiss to put in there is I'm going to be having some membership classes for anybody who's interested in membership or just kind of interested in finding out what Lutherans believe. Uh, that's going to be uh, the next couple of Sundays and it's going to be in the uh, boardroom starting at 9 o'clock. So tell your friends and neighbors and everybody else that might be interested. We have fun. It's a good deal. Anything else? Well, I'll be jiggered. Let's have um, happy birthday. Meg's birthday today. Huh? Meg's yeah, it's Meg's birthday today. That's right. Mm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday 
dear Meg. And may God bless you. <coughs> Thank you. And the next one. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. Hey, hey. Dear, every day of the year, a happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, the best that you've ever had. All right, and now we can sing our table prayer with praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's, uh, let's stand up for this. Come on, you can do it. Ready? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And he's coming again soon. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Now, get in there, be fed, and then get out there and feed. Go in peace. Keep serving our Lord. Thanks be to God.